All right, so I've been using the new 11 inch M4 iPad Pro for well over a week now, and my thoughts on upgrading this year have sort of evolved from my initial impressions video. You see, there's so much to love this year with the new M4 iPad Pro. It's thinner, it's lighter, it's more powerful, with a new and improved Apple Pencil and a much improved Magic Keyboard. But is upgrading to this iPad from say like an M1 iPad Pro worth it? Well, it's a bit complicated, so let me explain. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and I've been using the new M4 iPad Pro every single day as my go-to productivity and entertainment tablet. There is a lot to love this year with the new iPad Pro. So if you're new to the channel and you want to see more iPad content, then do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel and of course drop a like on this video. We're trying to hit 100k subscribers this year so any support really is greatly appreciated. So the star of the show this year without a doubt is the new M4 chipset found inside of this iPad. It's quite literally the most powerful chipset ever made. Yes, more powerful than the M3 Max chipset found inside of the MacBook Pros. So naturally, I decided to really push this thing. I wanted to see what this new chipset was really capable of, and if I would notice any performance improvements over the previous iterations. I was doing things like playing graphic intense games, editing tons of footage shot in ProRes log from my iPhone and apps like Final Cut Pro, and I even messed around with some 3D modeling. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't notice any difference in the performance. I mean, sure, the rendering speeds were probably a few seconds faster, but nothing significant enough that would make me want to go out and upgrade solely based on the performance alone. Don't get me wrong, all of this power is nice to have, but it is quite limited by iPad OS. I don't recommend anybody go out there and drop all of this cash strictly for the performance upgrade. You'll be more than content with an older refurbished M1 or M2 iPad Pro. But if you're thinking about upgrading this year for the hardware and this beautiful OLED display, then that's a different story. This year, thanks to the thinner form factor, aesthetically the M4 iPad Pro is one of the best pieces of hardware I've ever seen. I've seen some people over on Twitter say that they upgraded solely based on the hardware alone, and I get it. The M4 iPad Pro is an engineering marvel, but it's not without its downsides. This year, not only is the iPad Pro lighter, but the new Magic Keyboard is about 40 grams lighter. This has been great for portability. My backpack feels lighter, carrying it around in my hands feels lighter, and here's the best part, using it on my lap feels a lot lighter. But there's sort of this annoying trade-off. I mentioned lap ability in my previous iPad video. It's still not an official word, but I'm in contact with Webster, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, lap ability is still a problem. If you overextend this iPad while it's attached to the Magic Keyboard, uh, it does lose balance and sort of topple over. Now, this is primarily primarily due to the fact that the Magic Keyboard is lighter this year. So if you're relying on the Magic Keyboard to watch content while it's on your lap, don't overextend the iPad too much. A little over 90 degrees is fine, but anything over and it does topple over. However, if you're using the iPad with the Magic Keyboard combo on a flat surface, you can extend the screen all the way and it will never topple over. Just some food for thought for you guys. I mainly use my iPad Pro on my lap, so from my use case, the old combo might be a better option. I think a valid question that's always been thrown around is, what's the point of buying an iPad when alternatives like the MacBook Air exist? Is the iPad Pro just an overpriced consumption device? Well, these are all very valid questions, and these are questions that I tried to answer with my own workflow. I try to strictly only use the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard combo over the course of a week, even if I had to go through some annoying obstacles to get things to work. And here's what I found. It's interesting, because despite what people say about the iPad, I always find myself gravitating towards the iPad over my MacBook Pro. This is primarily because of the 11 inch form factor. I simply prefer to use thinner, lighter, smaller devices. That's probably the reason why I'm such a big fan of the iPhone 13 mini. Downsizing all of my tech in 2024 is a huge priority for me. I'm sick of big devices and I just can't wait to get rid of my iPhone 15 Pro Max and downgrade to a smaller iPhone. Every single day, I find myself grinding out this YouTube channel. I've sort of become obsessed with trying to find new ways to improve my content. And luckily, my wife is a data scientist, so every week we sit down and we go over my YouTube analytics. Just brainstorming ways to improve and grow the channel. YouTube analytics is a big part of the process. So using an iPad in this scenario is a much better alternative than a laptop. We're able to screenshot my YouTube analytics and then use the Apple Pencil to circle and write down notes on sections we want to work on. For meetings like this, it's really nice to have quick access to the toolbar. Simply squeeze the Apple Pencil, a toolbar pops up, and from here you can select whatever appropriate pen tool you want to tackle the task you have in front of you. I found that highlighting also flows better now thanks to the built-in gyroscope. You can angle the highlighter to your liking, and it really feels like you're using an actual highlighter. Of course, an artist can better utilize a gyroscope, but for a simpleton like me, highlighting is probably my best use case scenario. I recently started storyboarding on the iPad Pro, and this has been a total game changer when it comes to my workflow. One of my upcoming videos next month is a video on my desk setup. So I use my iPhone's camera to take pictures of everything on my desk, and like magic, all of these pictures 
browser already on my iPad. That's the beauty of the Apple ecosystem. Sometimes it just amazes me. Anyways, I brought these pictures over to Freeform and wrote down some of my thoughts on each product using the Apple Pencil. Then I thought of ways to create a compelling storyline. And now with the storyboard complete, when I have time, I can start filming the B-roll. And I can reference my storyboard to understand the type of shots that I want to take. Here's another vital piece for your iPad combo that you should consider. A paper-like screen protector. Now, I'm not just saying this because this is a sponsored video. I've actually been using Paperlike well before I even had a YouTube channel. So it's really nice to work with a brand that I truly do believe in. Paperlike is a matte-like screen protector that reduces glare and protects your iPad's display from small scratches and blemishes. Pretty standard, right? But here's what really separates Paperlike from the rest of the competition. They have engineered a technology called NanoDots, which are microbeads that add resistance and improve haptic feedback while you're using your Apple Pencil. This makes writing on your iPad feel like you're writing on actual paper. I kid you guys not. What's really impressive is you can actually hear the difference with an iPad that uses Paperlike versus an iPad that's not using Paperlike. Paperlike isn't a gimmick, it's a legit investment for artists and note takers alike. Even for someone like myself who uses the Apple Pencil just once in a while, I love the Paperlike's matte-like finish. Instead of spending $700 to buy a new iPad with the nano texture display, I get a very similar experience with Paperlike and save a ton of money. Every purchase comes with two screen protectors, the installation process is pretty straightforward, and if installed properly, you will not see a single bubble. Right now, you can pre-order your Paperlike screen protector for your M4 iPad Pro, and it'll be shipped to you in a few weeks. There's a link for you guys in the description below, and thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Sometimes I find myself scripting my videos, especially for longer videos like this one. Scripting makes the video creating process a lot less tedious. I'm not sure why, but when I'm scripting, I for the life of me can't seem to focus at home. I work much better in coffee shops, so I make my way over downstairs head to a local cafe, I grab a coffee and I type away. I'm able to quickly get into a flow state and this magic keyboard is perfect for hours of typing. This is the best typing experience I've ever had on any device. Much better than my MacBook Pro, much better than my MacBook Air, and it's primarily thanks to this new magic keyboard. The keyboard this year feels a lot more premium thanks to the aluminum built. The keys actually feel a lot better to type on, it's a bit more tactile, a bit more feedback, and I'm not sure if this is just a PC board or not, but my typing speed seems to have improved. The trackpad is also slightly bigger this year, and there's some nice haptic feedback when clicking on things. Honestly, it feels like I'm genuinely using a small laptop. I love that I'm able to get a very similar MacBook-like experience in a form factor as small as this. But what's really dumb is this Magic Keyboard isn't compatible with the older iPad Pros. So if I want to just buy this new Magic Keyboard and not upgrade my iPad, I can't. So far, you guys have only seen a glimpse of how I use my iPad Pro as a creative tool for building my YouTube channel. There's a lot more ways I can use my iPad Pro. Now, you guys definitely know what a voiceover is. It's a technique that creators use to make content. They film a scene and then later on they talk over it. Just a few weeks ago, I was in Japan and man, that was the trip of a lifetime. Anyways, while in Japan, I decided to make a day in the life video, pretty much a video where I take my iPhone 15 Pro Max with me all day long and film content on how I used it while I was in Japan. I'm currently in the midst of editing that video, so if you're into that type of content, definitely subscribe to the channel. So for that video in particular, I decided to use my iPad Pro to record the voiceover. Using the DJI Mic 2, I plugged in the USB-C receiver into my iPad Pro and recorded my voiceover using the transmitter. Then I took the audio and imported it onto Final Cut Pro on my iPad and laid it over a few scenes. Just another way of showcasing the use of my iPad Pro towards my creative workflow. Thanks to the Thunderbolt port, transferring large video files onto the iPad is super fast. Using a USB-C dongle, I just insert my SD card into the dongle and then I can look over all of the footage I took on my DSLR no matter where I am. And here's where this new OLED display is a game changer. Since the new iPad Pro is now using a tandem OLED display, the colors are much more vibrant, accurate, and true to life. This iPad's display has now actually become an instrumental part of my workflow. I'm usually shooting B-roll in my car or outdoors, and having a portable 11-inch display has been super convenient. I can quickly look over shots to see if I did a good job, or if I have to reshoot some of these shots. It definitely beats looking over shots on my camera viewfinder, which is just way too small. I love how color accurate this display is. It's bright, it's vivid, and this new display has deeper blacks, better contrast. Overall, a huge upgrade with these new OLED displays. And then we have the underrated use cases for the iPad Pro. There's an app called Canon Connect, and it allows me to stream my live feed of what my camera is seeing straight onto my iPad. This allows me to get really creative with the angles. I'm able to hide my iPad away from the scene, but still get a visual on if I'm still in frame and in focus. I've been using this as a tool in a lot of my videos, and this is a great way to utilize the iPad if you shoot alone and you don't have a team around you like some of these bigger YouTubers. And then of course, there are times when I use the iPad as a standalone tablet. I quite often tend to forget that this is a tablet. It's almost always on the Magic Keyboard Board, but the beauty of the 11 inch iPad Pro is its size. Using it as a standalone tablet is great. No hand fatigue whatsoever. Every Friday I just kick back on my couch and watch mostly YouTube. 
My favorite YouTube channel by far is The Y Files, and watching an hour long episode of Heck of Fish never gets old. The combination of the tandem OLED panel and the quad stereo speakers make watching content such an immersive experience. You kind of get sucked into the media that you watch it. Some of you had some serious concerns regarding this new iPad Pro's durability, and I mean, I get it. This iPad is 5.1 millimeters thick. It's quite literally the thinnest Apple product ever made, if you're not counting the Apple cart. But it is reinforced with a metal rib to prevent bending, so I wouldn't worry too much about it unless you accidentally sit on your iPad. And I always highly recommend getting Apple Care so durability shouldn't really be a concern. I did want to touch on the battery life quickly. In my early impressions video, I said that the M4 iPad Pro was draining battery a lot quicker than my M1 iPad Pro, but I did say that it was too early to come to any sort of battery conclusion. Well, after a week of daily usage, I can confidently say that the battery has settled in, and I'm pretty much getting the same amount of screen on times as I was getting on my M1 iPad Pro. More than enough to get you through an entire days of usage and then some. So yeah, that's been my honest thoughts and experience with the new 11-inch M4 iPad Pro. I hope this video gave you guys some sort of an insight on my workflow with this device. I feel like I use it for for a lot of different purposes. To me, it's not an overpriced media consumption device. It's a legit productivity tool that helps me get so much done throughout my day. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Paperlike. Link is in the description below. If you guys made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below so I know exactly who my true supporters are. You guys mean a lot to me. I really do appreciate the support. And of course, don't forget to flex with your overpriced media consumption tech. I'm mostly kidding. Well, not really, but I'm mostly kidding.